Welcome back. This is our last demonstration on ray diagrams. This one happens with a convex mirror. So, I've grayed out the concave side. I'm darkening down the convex side. There we are. And I'll put a little white over the concave one so that doesn't distract us get in the way of all the rays that we're going to be drawing. So, just to be different, I've changed the radius of the mirror too. For all the previous examples we were using 6, this one the radius is 8. So starting from the surface of the mirror, the center of this mirror is inside the curve of course. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 centimeters there's the center of our mirror. Half of that distance, 4 centimeters, is the focal length of the mirror. So starting from here again, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's the focus of the mirror. We and our objects are on this side, the real side of the mirror. For a convex mirror, the focus is actually inside the mirror where you can't touch it. It's a spot where light is going to appear to come from, but there isn't actually any light back here because probably this thing is mounted to a wall and there's wood and plaster back here. But it's still the optical focus of the mirror and all of our reflection procedures here are still going to use it. So we have our radius, we have our focal point, we have our two centimeter object once again and it's three centimeters from the surface of the mirror. So starting from the mirror, one, two, three, here's where our object goes and our object our object is two centimeters high. And we'll see what kind of image we get from this. So, two rays coming off the top of the object. One of them is supposed to go in parallel until it strikes the mirror. And now the reflected ray is supposed to go through the focus. So here's our ray. It goes through the focus, which is back behind the mirror. And, as usual, extend that ray in both directions because we don't know what kind of image we're going to get here. It could be back on the virtual side, it could be out with us on the real side. We'll see in a moment. Second ray is supposed to start from the object and it's supposed to go through the focus and strike the mirror. Well, we can do the, both of those things. It just turns out we don't do them in the usual order. This ray has to come in like so. Let's use a lighter line to mark this off. Here's the path that we have to follow. Our incident ray is going to come in like this, from the top of the object, but it's only going to make it as far as striking the mirror. From this point, the rest of this ray doesn't actually happen, we'll lose that. From this point we get our reflected ray, and because it came in through the focus, it's supposed to go out parallel to the axis of the mirror. So that ray will extend in that direction and also in that direction. Do both just to make sure that you can find your image no matter which side it appears on. And where the two reflected rays appear, right here, that's the top of our image. There it is, arrow pointing up. So, what kind of image did we get here? It's smaller than the original object. It's roughly one unit high instead of two, two units high. So we can say that this image is reduced. It's right side up. It's pointing the same direction as the original. So we can say that the image is upright. And it's behind the surface of the mirror. You don't need a screen to see it. It appears to be the light appears to be coming from inside the mirror, so the image we get is virtual. Now, do you wonder why I did four examples for concave mirrors and I'm only doing one for convex? Am I getting lazy? Let's find out. I'll quickly get rid of this one. We'll move our object a little bit, and we'll see what happens to our image when we adjust the position of the object here. Let's take our object 
and move it to let's move it back a ways here's our second object what did I move that to three four five six seven centimeters back and we'll do our rays real quick we're getting good at this so we can do them a little faster in parallel out through the focus and our second one in through the focus we'll get rid of this little stub because that didn't really happen the light bounces back once it hits the mirror and if it was in through the focus then it's out parallel where those reflected rays cross right here that's the top of our object what kind of image do we get well it's clearly shorter than the original so it's reduced it's right side up, so it's an upright image, and it's behind the mirror, so it's virtual. Huh. Sounds just like the first one we did. It turns out convex mirrors can only produce one kind of image. Every image that they make is reduced and upright and virtual. There's never any change. Now, I don't recommend memorizing that. I think it's much more valuable to you to actually know how to do this procedure and just find it for yourself anytime you wish. But if you're doing ray diagrams for a convex mirror and you do a couple of them and you keep getting the same result for the image, it's nothing to worry about. In fact, it means you're doing everything right. Concave mirrors can give us all kinds of weird and wonderful images that can be real or virtual, magnified or reduced, upright or inverted. But convex mirrors are simpler. You will always get reduced, upright, and virtual.